Alrighty, so thank you all for tuning in. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do the picture text, where it's kind of like a typography photo, where you just kind of combine the two together, as you saw in the picture that I made. So I'll be working on Photoshop CC 2018. All right, so we're going to open up a new document. So for me, I'm just going to use the basic 8.5 by 11. Uh, actually, I, there we go, this one here. Uh, that way it's on the portrait. These are the settings that I have it, so when I print, it'll pretty much print out as I need it to be, or as far as colors I meant. All right, so we're going to click Create. All right, so we're going to make this a little bit smaller. All right, so what I did was um, I was actually in the garage looking through a bit, and I actually found one of my Navy boot camp photos. So we're going to use that one. I thought it'd be funny to pull out and do something cool with boot camp Alex. So, um, so I have it here on my uh, desktop saved. Uh, yours will be probably in your files. Wherever you have your photo, pretty much you can just drag and drop it onto your work area. So um, I'm just going to click enter to release it. Now as you can see, let me go, let me add a layer. What I did was I clicked here to add a new layer and this one I'm actually going to use this one to color it white. I probably should have just, um, when I opened the file instead of a transparent background I should have done white or black or however you know you like to work it but sometimes if I forget and I just click whatever and I actually want it white but I don't want the actual photo white or whatever workspace I just make a new layer make sure that my four color is my foreground color is white go to fill okay this one I have it clear but I want to change that to normal and then that way when I go kind of edit and erase um, this picture I can kind of see what I'm missing so for this one, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lock it so that this layer doesn't move. All right, so now with this photo, um, I have, I guess when I scanned it, it didn't scan as great. Um, it was just kind of a quick thing. The colors look a little not its best, and it also has like a, a white area, and I think that's because if I, well, actually I took the photo out. I think it's because I didn't put it to the edge centered, so it scanned this extra piece. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, we'll try adding something fancy. Sometimes when I try to remove backgrounds or little pieces, um, I'll go to the paint bucket tool right here, come up to mode, drop down to where it says clear, and then the photo is not rasterized, so it'll have this little um, circle with the slash. I'm just going to click on the photo anyways and it's going to say do you want to rasterize it in this case I do. So I'll just click on the spot that I don't want and now it's gone. It cleared it out. Um, let's see. So now what I want to do is for this photo I want to enlarge it as big as possible. So in this case I'm going to use control T and I'm just going to size it up. Okay, now we're just going to position it. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so in this case, now that we've blown it up even more and your picture's looking kind of off, um, one of the easiest ways, and I'll there are so many ways to edit and clean up a photo and stuff like that. Um, at that point, you have to be really comfortable with trying to adjust your levels, brightness, uh, hues, and all that stuff. I mean, it's it can get pretty complicated, but sometimes with um, certain graphics or images, what I'll do is just I'll come up to image, come down to tone, and sometimes it'll just kind of do it for me right there. And it's like, ta-da! Um, 
but then again if you know if you want to clean it up more I mean I know I have like these speckles but then again that's the photo itself and how it's scanned so that would be something that if I was to do for a customer let's say definitely I would want to go ahead and make sure that the picture is clean and actually the glass area is clean so that way we don't pick up like these little imperfections as you can see here so all right so now that we got that part down now we're going to work on doing two different layers so that we can do the cutout. So we are going to create a new layer right down here. And if you want, you can title this one. What I did was I double clicked and we could just do, um, let's see, a white box. We'll do white with that one. All right. So now what we're going to be working with this time is the rectangular marquee tool, which is right up here. If you can't find it, um, sometimes yours may be selected as the elliptical marquee tool. All you have to do is just click right click and you'll get your little drop down and there it is. If you can't find it, once again, it could just be that your toolbar is not set up and I don't want that. So what I did was on the three little dots, it looks like that right here. It'll be right there. Um, and you may be able to find what you're looking for over here. All right, in this case, we're going back up here. All right, so we're going to create a white box. And what we want to do is try to find the center of the photo um, as best as possible. If you don't get it as perfect, it's fine because we could still reshape it and do what we need to do. So in this case, this is pretty much about half, you know, half down the photo. I'm just going to click and just drag it to the whole right edge and let go. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, actually that came out perfect. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is click on over to the text box over here. And I, let me see what font we're going to work with. Um, now, not all fonts will work with this type of thing. Um, if you're trying to get like the maximize amount, you definitely um, need to find the font that will work best. If you try to choose something kind of, let's say, um, something really thin, um, your photo in colors won't shine as, you know, as well through. So for me, I'm going to try and do this one. I'm not sure what I used. I think I used Access. I think in the photo I used Access. All right. So now I'm going to come over here. And I totally forgot what I wrote in the photo. Um, let's see, I think it was, all right, let's change the color to white so we can see it better. I think. And then the little saying that I chose was actually from, let me see. It was something that I had seen off of Pinterest, so let me, because I honestly cannot remember something about life and anchors. I don't know, it sounded Navy related and strong, so <laughs> I chose that. All right, here we go. Got it. Okay, so life. Roughest storms. Prove, actually, I am. Prove the strength of our anchors. All right, so I probably should have just aligned it. If you forget to align, no worries. Just kind of highlight everything and left the line. All right. Now the fun part is actually, and it's not really the fun part, <laughs> is actually sizing everything 
getting the shape right to fit along your portrait. Now, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a little too spaced out. Oh, did this copy onto there? Yeah, it did. All right, so, bummer. All right, let's see if I can just copy this again. This needed to be in its own layer, and that was my fault. I'm just gonna cut this out. And we lost our white box. All right, so we're gonna take a step back and go back and remake our box. That was my biff. And clearly, as many times as I've done this or even practiced this as well, you know, you're going to end up messing up. Um, let's make our box and actually fill it white while we're at it. Okay, so let me go back a little slower. So what I did was I did the rectangle marquee tool, left clicked, held down, dragged it out. Now I'm going to go over to the paint bucket. Since I cleared it out, I want to go back and make sure it's set on normal. Then I come over, click on the white, the box area, click yes to rasterize, and now I can fill it. Okay, now we're going to create a new layer, which is where our text is going to sit. And somehow this computer decided that I clicked this like a bajillion times. So I'm just going to delete these. Okay. This one, I'm going to write text. Okay, so now that we're on track again, we're going to go back to the text layer. Make sure that's highlighted because we don't want to click on the t white um, box layer because it will we'll lose the little uh, marching ant little outline thing where that's actually going to be the area where the letters are going to cut out. So anyhow, go back to the text layer. For me, I already um, typed it out, but just click on text. And then um, once you click on the area where you want to work at, go in your characters, find you know, the settings. Um, I would start out at like 12 point size. Um, you don't want to go too big, just so that you have a better idea how and where you're going with it. So since I already typed it out, uh, And now I gotta change this back to black. All right, so now we're going to do our thing where we're gonna start messing with um, start resizing it, get it to fit in more, um, widen the font and everything. Um, if your font is still jagged, just remember that up here is um, where you can align everything to the left. If we were doing it on the other side, um, if we were using this side of the photo, or if, you know whatever you're using, you would just click on the right align of the text, and it would be on this side. All right. So now that I have everything highlighted, now this is just where I start kind of shrinking everything. So I just kind of use the sidebar to just kind of, uh, let's see, this one is where it's kind of like the, there we go, horizontally scaling. Then this will vertically scale your, your font. This one up here is pretty much where it aligns the spacing in between. In this case, I kind of wanted it this way. I think I had this one at a thousand.
All right, so that's not looking as pretty as I like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is mm, let's say maybe I can just make my canvas size a little bit larger. this layer and kind of refill that so that it'll all be white. Click, click, and actually that's going to make my white box area. I'll have to resize it. So in order to resize my white box, I click on the white box layer, make sure it's on the move tool. Um, because even if you do control T and it won't work, um, it might be because you're not on, on the move tool and it might be thinking you're trying to erase or something. So I'm just going to make my box all right, we'll just do that size. All right, now I'm going to go back to the text. Got to click on the text tool and start again. So here I'm just pretty much kind of manipulating the font, trying to get it to a size that works. Try and move this over. When I initially did this, it was actually a lot smaller, but I'm trying to make this space larger. That way I can kind of get through all the major points of how to do this a lot faster. That way you can kind of see how all of this goes. Because once you pretty much learn the basic tools of how to do this, you know, you could pretty much use almost any other graphic, uh, photo. Um, you'll see that some of these are just using like the portrait itself of a person, like zoomed in. You can use photos like this. Um, I'll show you another, like two other ones, um, how sometimes the photo doesn't work. It needs to have color. And I chose this one pr primarily because it's got a lot of dark colors and it kind of just shows a lot better. All right, so I think this is pretty much, um, about as good as I want it. I mean, if we had a little bit more time, you know, it'd be something that we can sit here and work with. Okay, well, that's pretty good. All right. Um, now, depending, before we actually, uh, let me make sure my white box is all the way. Nope, it's not. All right, there we go. All right, so before we actually cut out the letters into this white box layer, you have to consider whether you want this little white line spacing or if you actually just want to make sure that the letters are lined up so you don't have like that little white gap. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and line it up where the white gap doesn't show. And it looks pretty, pretty good. All right, zoom that out. All right, so once we got everything set on, 
the next thing we're going to do is on the actual T, if you come off to the layer and you right click, you're going to get something completely different. And that will confuse you as to why you cannot find um, this area. So make sure your mouse is over the T, right click, you're going to come down to select pixels. Now you have the little marching ants going over your letters. Click on the white box layer and press delete on the keyboard. Next, you will take your text layer and just make that invisible. And now it's actually showing through. Now to get rid of the marching ants, um, I usually just click on lasso tool or magic wand. I prefer the lasso tool where I just click on it and it goes away. Now you'll notice that in this area you can't see the O, the V, and the E primarily because um, I made the, the white box larger than what the photo was. Um, so in this case just so that it'll just show through and that way you guys have a better idea I'm just gonna change the color of this layer to black oh no and it won't do the other ones either hold on let's see let me see if I can just shorten this up. Okay, so just basically for this purpose, you'll just see how now you could see all the letters. Um, lastly, in this case, it would just be really cropping the photo. So you could um, try to do your best in trying to align everything. All right, so. And this is pretty much the basis of it on how to get this layer with the cutout. And once you do the cropping, you just pretty much crop down. And just hit enter. You know, and then you can just keep cropping it to where you know you get it to how you'd like it. And this is just pretty much the basis, the basic idea of how to do this. Um, from there, you pretty much can do it with anything. Um, I'll go ahead and do like a quick one with um, two other photos. I'll do one with. Let me see. Let me do a new layer. Oh. We got a layer right here. Okay, I'm going to show you one that may not work as well. So in this case, this sugar skull has a lot of light colors. Um, so even when I try to get that there, I mean, it probably would look better if the background was black. And let's take our Actually, I would have to do a completely new box. Yeah, let me do a new box with this one. Just simply because um, even if you try to just color it, it actually won't color out correctly because you'll have um, the wrong area. So we'll just X this one out. New one. Just kidding. There we go. <laughs> okay, here we are. The text here is black. I'm just not even going to bother changing it. Select pixels and delete. Hide. Come over and click that out. So in this case, you can kind of see how this one will work better if there's a black background. Um, same thing with like different portraits it just has to have darker colors for the um, for the picture to look better in my opinion um, in this case this is one of them because even with the white background um, 
it's just kind of hard to see it. I mean, you could see this part, but once you get over here to the face where there's a lot of lighter colors, the words kind of disappear. So you kind of have to just, you know, work with what you have and kind of figure out, you know, what's the best course of action. Uh, another one that I have, we'll just use just to give you guys a couple of different ideas to show you. All right, same thing. Maybe I can just put this on top of the white one. Yep, there we go. I'll change, change this one to white real quick. Okay, so see how this one ha is a little bit better um, as far as, you know, what kind of background or what kind of picture you can do. Um, so in this case, uh, and then as far as trying to get like the letters to fit in where you're trying to put is going to really take some patience, some, um, you know, manipulating on how you want the text. Um, sometimes it just looks just fine with the text being cut off. In this case, you know, you won't even tell or you can't really tell that it says anchors, but... But yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, just not all, not all the text that you want to put or like poems. Like I was, initially I was going to try and put the, uh, um, anchors away on my photo, but it was way too long. It was just too much and decided to not go with it. So it just seems better when it's more shorter quotes and stuff like that to do these kind of things. Or if you're not really caring about what is said, you know, if you, let's say put like a favorite song you know someone's portrait with a favorite song in the lyrics I mean if you you know it can work that way as well or just you know anything in general it's just kind of pretty much just have fun with it um, but that's pretty much the basis of it and uh, let's see I'm gonna try and see if there's any questions All right, so Kimberly asked if this technique will only work in Photoshop. Uh, no, um, I know you can do it with other programs as well. I'm just not familiar with them um, on how, you know, they work. Um, I know that with uh, Photoshop Elements, the setup is a little bit different from Photoshop. It doesn't have like the full 100% um, exact layout in tools and stuff like that but the basis of it is almost the same um, I know with the affinity designer I don't know why I'm just getting stuck on saying it correctly um, the process is a little bit different um, almost the same I mean it still gives you the same results other format that you're looking for uh, if anyone else have any other questions um, even after I, I'm no longer live, you can definitely, you know, post out your um, questions below the video. I'll try my best to get to you as soon as possible and help you out. I usually get, um, you know, PMs from, you know, members asking, you know, they get stuck on something. Because um, I know that sometimes our layout is not the same and you can't find everything or it's not doing what you want it to do. And uh, I understand completely. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and some of these techniques. Like I said, once you pretty much got the basis of this down, you can pretty much just kind of use anything you want. Just keep in mind that some of the photos are not going to actually work out good. Um, it has to have, you know, more color, more depth to it uh, in order for it to be... Um, to give you that effect that you are looking for especially with the with the words um, and then also stressing on the you know the font that you're trying to use uh, using too thin of a font um, is not going to give you a great result you know kind of like the thicker the lines like this one here will you know show through as much of the picture or graphic that you're doing and give you that that effect that you're looking for but other than that, I hope everyone enjoyed this. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.